the Solanaceae family. It's given us BLTs, french fries, and eggplant parmesan. Solanaceae plants make up the heart of the world's most important and loved foods. The potato, an icon of this plant family, is a tasty and nutritional powerhouse that plays a key role in global food security. Among the plant-based diet, potato plays a very important role in human nutrition because it's affordable, it's, it's accessible year-round, and it's culturally acceptable. Basically, it's not really hard to ask people to add potato to their plates, and everyone loves potato. And that's why we are interested in potato and how we can make it more nutritious for the population. Potato is an ancient crop that was first domesticated in the Andes region of South America eight to 10,000 years ago. It made its way to Europe in the 16th century before spreading to Asia, North America, and eventually Australia, New Zealand, and Africa. Over time, cultivated varieties lost some of the diverse traits found in their wild relatives. This lack of genetic diversity played a big role in the devastation of Ireland's Great Potato Famine, when most of the country's potato crops were wiped out by late blight. Gene banks like this one at the National Laboratory for Genetic Resources Preservation in Fort Collins, Colorado, provide plant geneticists and breeders with a wealth of preserved samples that contain potato species genetic material. These genes could contain a um, unique code uh, for a nutritionally important trait that we are looking for. This vast gene pool basically is a very good natural opportunity for us to screen them for the specific trait that we are interested in. With malnutrition and cardiometabolic disorders on the rise, both linked to diets low in fruit and vegetables, plant geneticists are working to introduce genes for nutritional properties found in wild species back into the conventional version of potatoes we eat today. After we freeze dry them, you can see here, we get these nice fine powders and they come in different color because we get them from different potato. The next step would be basically separating the compound in all of these and identifying what are those compounds with the goal to improve the whole nutritional value of potato. Plant geneticists are also working to create varieties that can better adapt to new diseases. We are transferring plant material all over the world and so we are also transferring diseases all over and, and we see new things popping up all the time. There's at least 70 major diseases we know of of potato. In my research lab, we work on bacterial and viral pathogens of potato and we're uh, primarily interested in how plants resist these pathogens and, and in finding ways to help farmers manage the diseases. And so if you can breed a resistant plant, then the farmer doesn't have to spray pesticide and that, that saves for everybody. It saves the farmer money and it saves the environment. Although potatoes are one of the most water efficient major crops, farmers are also growing increasingly concerned about their ability to tolerate hotter, drier conditions. So potatoes don't really like to be above 85 degrees Fahrenheit and as the planet warms, it's gonna be harder to grow a potato. The reason why it's so important to conserve these genetic resources um, because biology is not static. There's new diseases that come up all the time, just like we saw with COVID. We need to have the resources that we can go back to. If we lose this diversity, we lose those options. It's a tall order. Not only do we need potatoes to be nutritious and adaptable to a changing climate, they also need to look appealing and taste good. Plant geneticists are unsung heroes behind the fascinating work that goes into the science of maintaining our global food supply. 